Hey everyone, did you know that you can do a massive cost savings by 50% or more of your OpenAI or ChatGPT API call by using this great library called GPT Cache along with its integration with Langchain AI. And also you can do much faster response times, overcome the rate limits restrictions by OpenAI and greatly enhance the scalability of your large language based applications by reducing the load on the LLM service. So what exactly is GPT Cache? First of all, let's say you have an application uh, which is dependent on the API call to large language models like ChatGPT or GPT-4 etc. And as your application grows in popularity and encounters higher traffic levels, the expenses related to the large language model API calls can become substantial. Additionally, the LLM services might exhibit slow response time, especially when dealing with a significant number of requests. To tackle this challenge, the GPT Cache library builds a semantic cache for storing LLM responses. Now, semantic caching is more complex than simple string based caching, but it can provide substantial efficiency gains when working with language models that often receive semantically similar queries. And now quickly, let's see the mechanism of GPT cache. So GPT cache first performs embedding operations on the input to obtain a vector and then conducts a vector approximation search in the cache storage. After receiving the search results, it performs a similarity evaluation or similarity search and returns when the set threshold is reached. And you can adjust the threshold which will change the accuracy of its fuzzy search results. You can always pass a parameter of temperature while requesting the API service or the relevant large language model. And the range of temperature is between 0 and 2, default value is 0. A higher temperature means a higher possibility of skipping cache search and requesting the large language model directly. And uh, in GPT Cache, you can also customize your own semantic cache and users can even develop their own implementations to suit their specific needs. For the embedding generator of GPT Cache, you can choose your preferred model such as OpenAI Embedding API or ONNX with GPT Cache or Paraphrase Albert ONNX model, Hugging Face Embedding API, Cohere Embedding, Fast Text Embedding and Sentence Transformers Embedding as well. So now how GPT cache can handle the whole range of different temperatures? Let's discuss this quickly. So when working with the different temperatures uh, on your LLM API calls, the basic strategy here is to select after the evaluation. Uh, softmax activation on model logits, which is the common technique involving temperature in deep learning is applied here as well. So GPT cache uses a softmax function to convert the similarity scores of candidate answers into a list of probabilities. The higher the score, the more possible it is to be selected as a final answer. The temperature actually controls the sharpness of possibility distribution. This means that uh, an answer with a higher score is more likely to be selected. The post processor temperature softmax uh, a parameter in GPT cache follows these algorithm to select an item from a list of candidates given their scores or confidence levels. And here is the code implementation integrating GPT cache with uh, with Langchain. All right, let's uh, go through them step by step. The first function I'm using these one hashify string. Uh, so let's uh, see the breakdown of this function. It accepts a string name as input and the string is then converted to bytes using the dot encode method. This is necessary because the hashing function requires a byte like object. It then hashes these bytes like object using the SHA-256 algorithm via hashleap.sha-256 name.encode method. What do you see right here? And finally, it converts the hash objects to a hexadecimal string representation using the hex digest method and returns this string. So why do we need this hashify string function here? Well, the purpose of this is to create a unique and consistent identifier for each string that can be used as a key to store and retrieve the results in the cache. 
the rationale behind the use of hashing is the in this context is based on several important properties of hash function first one is uh, determinism given uh, which which means that given a specific input a hash function will always produce the same output in other words hashing the same string will always yield the same result this is important for the caching system because it ensures that the same query will always result in the same cache key and then the next property of a hashing function that is very important here in this case is the property of uniformity which means a good hash function will distribute hashes uniformly across the possible hash values this means that similar input will on average produce vastly different outputs ensuring that different queries don't collide in the cache and the last property of a hashing function that is important is the property of efficiency a hash function are computationally efficient to compute this is important as you wouldn't want the process of generating cache keys to be a bottleneck in your system when you are working with large language models api call all right with the hashing string this method properly explained let's move forward uh, to explain the rest of the lines of codes so the next uh, next function init gpt cache this method i'm using here it takes a cache object and a string llm and hashes the string and then initializes a similar cache with a directory name based on the hash of the string the purpose of this is to create a separate cache directory for each unique query string Using a hash based naming system here ensures that each unique query gets its own cache directory while also ensuring that the same query will always map to the same cache directory due to the deterministic property of hash functions. And uh, with the caching system established, you can uh, then call the LLM function with various queries the first time you call an llm with a particular query it will take longer to process because the result is not yet in the cache after the initial call the result is stored in the cache so subsequent calls with the same or semantically similar query can retrieve the result from the cache much faster now one particular thing i want to mention again and emphasize again that when i'm matching two queries these are not string to string match it is a semantically matching system and uh, there's different algorithm that has been implemented within gpt cache to match two strings to check whether they are semantically similar and that's why they bring in the conversion to vector uh, for for matching two different strings so let's see what's happening here the first time i am calling the llm this method actually makes an api call to the to the to the relevant llm api service provider it may be uh, gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 or co here or something else and i'm writing my first query write a poem uh, the, uh, sorry it is a first prompt you can say write a poem about ai and that takes 12.2 second to six seconds and because it takes a longer time because this is not yet in the cache the next time i am doing this again that is write a poem about ai exactly same string remember this prompt and this prompt is exactly same string to string match this time it is already in the cache and so my wall time this time is only 438 millisecond compared this with the previous uh, or 12.26 seconds and then uh, this is interesting this is where the semantically similar uh, things comes into play so here i am saying that give me a poem on artificial intelligence this is a there is no a string to string match here but this sentence is semantically exactly similar to the previous two prompts and so uh, the gpt cache system will recognize that and will take from the cache and here again it is 489 millisecond which is almost similar to this and that's the beauty of gpt cache uh, this particular library so the caching system here within gpt cache is designed to recognize this semantic similarity and can use the cached result from the first query to quickly return a result for the second and third query